Welcome back to the Educated Ignorance Podcast on the Four Frequency Sake Podcast Network. My name is Joe Inkle. This is, like I just stated, the Educated Ignorance Podcast. Welcome in. It's conference tournament championship we, uh, week, and we are here to break all of it down as we are inching in on March Madness. I guess you can say we're right smack dab in the middle of it. Uh, if uh, you're joining us for the first time, Thank you very much for doing so. Please like the video. It means a lot. If you could, subscribe on whatever platform you're watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube page. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers. Also, if you could, go subscribe to our TikTok for all types of content like Elite Eights, Daily Best Bets, and content from these posts as well. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, supporting our network. And also, uh, uh, you know, go to our sub stack as well. All those things you can find at four frequency sake. Okay, it is time for the Big 12 tournament preview. If you uh, are again joining us, we just uh, wrapped up the Big 10 tournament preview. So go ahead when you're done with this video, go back and watch that one. It was a good one. It was very nice to get that one out there, talk about the Big 10. But now we are going to talk about, in my opinion, the best league in college basketball this season and kind of has been for a while now the Big 12. Let's get right into it. All right. Big 12 tournament. Let's start off with, I think, the story of the season. You could argue the best story in college basketball in general. And it's not like this team is new to the scene, but a lot of stuff was said about how this team would look at taking a step up in competition. And it was, folks. I'm being hyperbolic. The Houston Cougars, after a long-standing bid in the American Athletic Conference prior Conference USA, they then go to the American. Now they move to the Big 12. A lot of folks thought that Houston was going to struggle. And a lot of people, considering their, I wouldn't say lack of tournament success, but Houston would always kind of be a bridesmaid, never a bride, and how far they could get into the tournament. You think of the last couple seasons where you know especially last year where they kind of fell short of their overall expectations after last season being the number one overall seed in the tournament um you know they felt like i said fell short of what people thought they would do and people thought that they would struggle in their first year in big 12 play and this team has done nothing but absolutely dominate Everybody they played almost all season long. You could argue that the best team in college basketball is one of three teams. The defending champion, UConn Huskies, the team with the best player in the country in Zach Eady, or it's this team in the Houston Cougars. What Kelvin Sampson has done to have consistency, to have the ability where every year this team with their players are going in and they are handling business, it is so so impressive just think since covid what this team has done in 2021 they won 28 games and they made the final four before losing to the defense eventual national champion baylor bears two years ago as a five seed they knock off four seed illinois in the second round they beat arizona before losing to villanova in the elite eight a regional semifinal. They win 32 games. And then last year, of course, they were the number one overall seed in the end. They were the second overall seed in the NCAA tournament. And they lost in the Sweet 16 to Miami, who, of course, went on to go to the Final Four. Kelvin Sampson and the Houston team has done nothing but dominate, no matter what conference they're in, no matter the opponent. Now, listen, folks are going to say that none of it matters until they win a national title. I understand. I get how that is a very elitist mindset. But in my opinion, it's a way too simplistic mindset. I think we have taken for granted what Houston has done and what Houston has really become over this stretch of time that they went into the best conference in the country and won it outright. By what? Multiple games this season? I, they went in and won. Yeah, they beat. They won two games clear of everybody in the league. Their only losses on the year, and they were 
all in Big Ten play, or excuse me, all in Big 12 play. They lost at Iowa State early in the season, who, yeah, guess what? That wasn't a bad loss because, A, nobody wins at Hilton, and B, Iowa State was really good. They lose then at TCU. They lost two in a row. Oh, well, who knows? Things might be falling. Actually, no, they smoke Texas Tech, blow out Houston, or blow out UCF, go on the road to BYU and win. They hammer teams night in and night out. They had one stinker, and that game was at Kansas, but that was the one game really all season where Kansas has kind of came alive on the offensive end. Then they, they closed the season by beating Kansas at home by 30. This Houston team is so good. They are so, so dominant, and it's going to be hard to not pick them to win it all. I really do mean that, and I know this two straight tournament cha- uh, previews where we're talking about the top seeds at length, but I think what Purdue's done this year is impressive because of the team that they have, and this Houston team, I just feel like the program as a whole, we need to sit back and really enjoy what this team has done over the last couple of years. I feel like we're taking them for granted. And I feel like we need to stop doing that. Okay, let's take a look here at some of the best matchups early on in the bracket in the Big 12. I, we're going to talk about the bubble here in a second, but I do think this league has always been one for fascinating early day matchups. I think UCF Oklahoma State could be a very fascinating matchup on the first day, uh, and it could lead to some intriguing uh, you know, if UCF gets by, it could be a scare potential for BYU in that first round matchup for them. Uh, the second round matchup on Wednesday to kick the first, the second day of the Big 12, 10, 12 tournament off. Um, let's t- tie this into some bubble teams. There's a couple, there are, I think there are no doubt seven, six locks, seven locks in the NCAA tournament here. I think you could potentially talk me into nine. Um, I think. Of course, just going in order, Houston, Iowa State, Baylor, Texas Tech. What a bounce back year for Texas Tech, by the way. Pop Isaacs has been a just a wrecking ball alongside of all those guys down in Lubbock. Then you have BYU, Kansas, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, TCU are kind of fringe. Outside of that, I think Kansas State's about an arm's length away. I don't I wouldn't say Oklahoma and TCU is a loser leaves town match by any stretch of the imagination. I do believe, though, that the loser could be in some potential trouble right now. Palm has both of them as nine seeds in their in his brackets. Um, he doesn't have, uh, let me try to see here. He's He doesn't have any big 12 team, obviously. Uh, he's got Texas as well as a nine seed. If bid stealers get frisky, I think there's a world where Oklahoma could, whoever loses the Oklahoma TCU game, they could be kind of in the fritz. Um, But both of them have 20 wins. I think both of them are are well in. Kansas State, Cincinnati, both have 18 wins. And I know we were, we kind of talked in the Big Ten about how two of the bubble teams are Michigan State and Iowa, and they both are going into their conference tournament with 18 wins. I just think that you know, finishing under 500 in league play. Now, granted, Oklahoma did that. But in the case of Kansas State, Oklahoma, though, also started the year so hot. And they have some, like Oklahoma's case, well, people are going to try to make a case more than likely against Oklahoma. They beat Providence by 20 points They uh, earlier in the season. They have some really good wins. They beat Oklahoma. Uh, they beat Iowa State. Um they let's see here looking for some other wins they won on the road by 20 at Kansas State um so so they have less of them they did be they beat BYU at home they have less of them as the season goes on they have been in a bit of a tailspin after starting the beginning of the year they lost by two at home against Houston um at, on March 2nd and man that could have been a huge win for them just to get some huge momentum going into the Big 12 tournament, um, and it could have probably locked them up. I think if Oklahoma lost to TCU, I think they could, and, and and there were some bid stealers, they could get a little bit frisky. Just trying to compare some lines here. TCU also coming in on a bit of a fringe uh, slide. They lost to end their season against UCF. 
um, which is not a great loss. So UCF does have some some nice moments this season. They lose a nail biter at Texas Tech in the end of February. They lost at home to Baylor, uh, which is obviously these aren't bad losses by any means. I'm just pointing out some of their notable ones where they could have had chances. But a good win for them when te- when Oklahoma at the time was 13 and one. They knocked them off at home. They of course have the Houston win. Uh, so those are some some really good moments. They won in triple overtime at Baylor. So the reason I think that you can look at Baylor as a bit safe, a bit more safe, a bit safer than a team like Oklahoma, TCU definitely has much better wins when you compare them head to head. And I think that is the one thing that separates the Big 12 from other leagues. Maybe that's why it is the best league in college basketball, because you don't have these bubble teams like the big 10 has two bubble teams, but again, they only have, in my opinion, five teams that are no doubt locks for the NCAA tournament, uh, a T a conference like the sec, they've got, you know, I think they're the second best league in college basketball. They have probably six, uh, six locks and a couple of teams that are like, Right on the fringe, um, like a team people think are going to make the tournament is Ole Miss, and they're the 10 seed in the SEC. I don't get it, but what do I know? Um, we'll talk about that when we talk about the SEC. Um, uh, but a, a big the Big East, who I still think is a good league, but the Big East, the middle of the Big East, has nothing but bubble teams when it comes to Seton Hall, St. John's, Providence, Villanova even so like there's a lot of bubbleism in like the Big East I think the Big 12 and I think it, it's you could say it's a, if you want to say it's a it's a testament to the strength of the league I think that's fair just going off of the fact that I mean we're talking about them having nine teams no doubt will be on called have their name called on selection Sunday I think that's pretty damn impressive all right time for the predictions for the Big 12 tournament. In the semifinals, the first team to make it, I am going to predict, of course, the one seed, the Houston Cougars. I think they are just rolling right now. They'll play the winner of TCU Oklahoma. I know Oklahoma gave them hell in their game, and they lost at TCU, but on a neutral floor, give me the Houston Cougars, my friend. All right, they will go against in their sem- in their semifinal, Texas Tech. Um, not to keep chalk here, but I just think that the matchup wise, like, you know, I think they'll match up with a BYU, UCF, Oklahoma state. Those are the teams that they could play. I think that their style, the way they guard, I think it's going to be a, 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 a style that they can handle. And I, I think that is going to be, uh, uh, Texas tech in the big 12 semifinals down on the bottom of the bracket. Oh, baby. Um, this could get interesting. I'm tempted to go chalk, but I'm not because I'm not boring. We're going to take hook them, baby. The Texas Longhorns stamping themselves into the NCAA tournament. No more ifs, buts, or coconuts. This team is finally getting healthy. They're kind of starting to play better. Um, they have some moments where you wish that goodness gracious that they would just you know, figure it out and have a stretch. Like, can you give me two weeks where you don't have any dumb stuff happen? The They, they were so good for 30 minutes against Baylor, and then they just kind of shat themselves down the stretch. Um, but this team has their moments where they've been good, like especially as of late. So the last couple weeks, they go to Texas Tech and win by 12. They come home and handle business against Oklahoma State. Then they beat Oklahoma and end the season by 14. The Baylor loss, if they want to finish that off, you're you're thinking of Texas right now is maybe starting to get hot. I like the way they're playing. They've been getting healthy throughout the last half of the season. Um, of course, with Ace Miss and Dylan DeSue and Dylan Mitchell and Tra- Travis Hunter and uh, you know, or Ty, excuse me, Tyrese Hunter. Um, I, I just I feel like with what Texas is starting to do, they're playing better. Do I believe this is a team that when we get to the 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 actual big bracket, they're going to make noise? I doubt it. But in this situation, they're going to match up with Iowa State. I think that's, a, you know, the game could get ugly. And at the end of the day, I, I trust some of their shot makers more. Give me Texas. And then 
listen, this is one where, you know, I think Cincinnati knocks off West Virginia. I think there's a world where Cincinnati knocks off Kansas, but give me Baylor. So I have the one seed, the four seed, and then the three seed versus the seven seed down on the bottom of the bracket. Kansas has just not been playing good this season down the stretch. They're banged up. I don't think there's a world that exists where uh, Kevin McCuller and Hunter Dickinson are not playing in the Big East, in the Big 12 tournament. I'll get it right eventually. Um, so give me in the final Houston versus Baylor and give me Houston to win. I just feel like right now, listen, the Houston Baylor matchup will be fascinating. I just feel like right now, Houston, the way they're playing, uh, they have been so dialed in the only team that's even, I mean, like the, the Oklahoma game and the Baylor game are the only two were, that have been really close calls. They handled their business, of course, at home against Kansas. They absolutely smoked, uh, smoked them. They, uh, handled, uh, Texas at home. They, they kept Iowa state at arm's length for 40 minutes. I just love the way this team is playing, but listen, in this, in this conference, anything can happen. I'm excited for it um, and excited to see this is the best conference, in my opinion, in college basketball. And I'm picking the Houston Cougars to win it over the Baylor Bears in the final. Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer and company getting it done. Okay, that is going to do it for our Big 12 tournament preview. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like the, if you like, please like this video. If you like this video, subscribe it. If, if you subscribe, if you really like it. Tell all your friends that we are coming at you with more NCAA tournament uh, action. Uh, conference tournament week, big week here. We're going to be keep knocking out videos. We've got uh, coming up tomorrow a couple other big ones on the horizon, the Big East and the ACC. So stay tuned for that. Of course, today, go back and listen, if you haven't already, to our Big Ten tournament preview we really appreciate it thank you very much uh subscribe to us of course on youtube and uh subscribe to us on youtube and of course on tiktok as well as our sub stack you can catch all of the stuff that we're putting out all of our great content all right this has been the educated ignorance podcast if you ain't got your game you best pass the sticks we'll see you next time uh and that time will be tomorrow thank you guys very much for hanging out we're out peace